Technology transfer is the process by which research findings and new technology are transferred into useful processes, products, and programs. It can serve two functions in a highway agency. It allows the agency to act as receiver of new information from outside sources. And it allows the agency to act as provider of information to various offices within the agency. In this program, we will cover the seven aspects of technology transfer. A definition of technology transfer. Steps in adopting new technology. Barriers to implementation. Characteristics affecting adoption of technology. Organizational characteristics affecting transfer. Effective delivery systems and recommendations for improved technology transfer. There are two phases in selecting new technology. The identification phase and the evaluation adoption phase. First, there must be a system in place to continually identify new technology. The evaluation adoption phase involves six steps. Screening, preliminary examination, detailed evaluation, translation of media to practices, implementation, and feedback. The first step involves an initial introduction and review of the technology by an individual or committee with a recommendation for rejection or continued investigation. The second step is preliminary examination. It typically includes an in-depth study of all material available, including test reports, research reports, and results from other agencies. Results are summarized and recommendations are made for detailed evaluation or rejection. The third step involves in-house laboratory or field testing to test performance under local conditions. Completion of this step usually leads to acceptance or rejection of the technology. The fourth step involves the translation to media of practices or packaging. If the technology is accepted, results must be converted into the media of practice, which includes standards, specifications, manuals, and other internal communications affecting the use of technology. The fifth step is implementation. A program for implementation must be designed and executed. The measures can include demonstrations, policy statements, training materials, documentation feedback, workshops, and promotional announcements. The sixth step is performance feedback. In this step, follow-up and evaluation are carried out to provide documentation of benefits, catch any early failures, and identify any adjustments required to achieve intended objectives. Prior to adopting any new technology, evaluators must consider possible barriers to implementation. Each organization is somewhat unique in its organizational structure, political climate, public priorities, and historical perspective. This diversity tends to weaken the ability to achieve adoption of new technologies. 
typical barriers include cost factors, such as initial costs and life cycle costs. If the cost is too high, the likelihood of adoption decreases significantly. Performance is important. The product must perform adequately to be adopted. A number of other factors can also act as barriers. Factors such as unacceptable costs or delays to motorists, loss of employee job rights, lack of equipment for implementation. Low bid procurement procedures may inhibit its use. Risk of failure may be perceived as too high and a lack of support by key decision makers. Too often, agencies attempt to implement new technology that has flaws. Promoters often fail to evaluate it against the following evaluation criteria. Relative advantage. How much better is the new method compared to the way things are currently being done? If a major advantage of the new idea over current practices is not perceived, the innovation is not likely to be adopted. Simplicity. Can potential users understand the innovation? Can training be effective in encouraging adoption? If they don't, it will not be used. Trialability. How easy is it to try out the idea? If an agency must change procedures and make commitments that it cannot easily get out of, it usually is very resistant to change, no matter what the merits of the innovation. Observability. How clearly can you see the benefits of the innovation? And how clearly can you communicate them to others? It is good to be able to easily see if the innovation saves money or time, rather than if the benefits are long-term or difficult to explain. Cost. The upfront cost of a new idea is important. If there is an increase in costs, even if the increase results in a long-term savings, it is more difficult to get an idea adopted than if there were an immediate reduction of costs. In addition to the basic information that characterizes the product, other information is required in order to satisfy numerous policy and procedure requirements of various functional areas. For example, purchasing or procurement is interested in the cost, specifications, and legal attributes of the product. On the other hand, maintenance is interested in the performance of the product, method of application, limitations, and handling precautions. These conflicting interests sometimes result in the provision of more information than is necessary. Thus, information must be tailored to the user's needs. This varies for different classes of users. Highway agencies typically require a wide range of other types of information before they can begin evaluation of a new product. This includes trade names of the product, manufacturer and location, recommended use and limitations, laboratory analysis, plans, sketches, photographs, and specifications, royalty cost, guarantee terms, features and advantages claimed, existing standards, plans and specifications, instructions for use, material and in-place costs, 
limit on availability, willingness to provide samples, and current users. Organizational characteristics also affect technology transfer. There are four characteristics that are generally seen as most important. They include risk-taking climate. Some agencies are more willing to take risks than others. Compatibility. The more an idea is compatible with past procedures of the organization, the more likely it is to be adopted. Regulations. The extent to which outside organizations, particularly government, can affect the decisions of an organization by imposing regulations. This can be positive or negative. Labor reaction. The reaction of labor groups will affect whether or not an idea is tried. Any change likely resulting in job losses will need to have significant benefits in order for an organization to try it. Next, let's cover the typical types of delivery systems used for effective technology transfer. These delivery mechanisms will be covered in more detail in the second tape of this series, entitled Establishing an Effective Technology Transfer Program. Circuit riders, or traveling road shows, have numerous advantages, including flexibility, one-to-one -one assistance, and mobility to reach large numbers of people in their own organizations. Conferences or short courses can also be very effective. You should schedule courses to fit user needs. Carefully plan and advertise courses. Give participants as much advance notice as possible. Pick speakers with great care and let them know the nature of the audiences and their needs. And always use evaluation tools to improve future conferences. Audiovisual aids are also effective. Videotapes are good for work methods, processes. Overheads are good for lecture point highlights. Charts and graphs best illustrate trends and relationships. And slides are also useful in illustrating key learning points. A number of new technologies must also be considered. They include computer networks, video conferencing, interactive video, and others. A number of agency practices, if adopted, can help improve technology transfer. The first involves assigning personnel. Whenever possible, full-time technology transfer specialists should be designated at regional levels. If feasible, these individuals should function as circuit riders to disseminate information on a face-to-face -face basis. You should also develop a train-the-trainer program for technology transfer specialists. It should include definitions, technology transfer process, factors affecting adoption of innovation, and discrimination techniques. Also, agency personnel should be trained in four key areas of importance for successful technology transfer. Peer-to-peer -peer information exchange networks, the proper use of communications channels, assessment of user needs using instruments and surveys, and the human element in technology transfer, and workshops in the proper use of writing, speaking, and communication skills. In this program, we have covered the proper steps 
for effective technology transfer. Technology transfer is the process by which research findings and new technology are transferred into useful products and programs. There are six basic steps in the selection process. Initial screening by individual or committee, preliminary examination with a recommendation for detailed evaluation or rejection, detailed evaluation involving field trials or lab testing, translation to media of practice, including standards and specifications, implementation, which includes demonstrations, workshops, and announcements, and performance feedback, which is carried out to document benefits. There are five key requirements for new technology to be adopted. The new idea must represent a major advantage over current practice. Relative advantage. Simplicity. It must be easily understood. Trialability. It must be easy to try out. Observability. The benefits must be clearly observable. And costs. The upfront costs are critical. An increase in costs makes it difficult to get an idea accepted. A reduction in costs makes it much more likely. Each agency can also improve its technology transfer process by following some simple recommendations. First, compile and maintain a mailing list. To enjoy a successful transfer of a needed technology, there must be ongoing identification and contact with target clientele. Publish a quarterly or monthly newsletter. This task allows you to reach every person on the mailing list routinely and at minimum cost. Newsletters are easy to publish and provide an excellent method of keeping readers up to date about new technology. Current products should be identified, such as tips on new techniques or products, technical materials. Agency personnel should also attend leading technical meetings and report to their clientele through the newsletter. Videotapes are particularly well suited for transfer of technical information as well as information on day-to-day -day operations. Technical materials should target all levels of the clientele. Also, provide information and technical assistance. Make it easy for persons with transportation problems to contact the Technology Transfer Center. A toll-free telephone number is useful for ready access to the center. Training is the most effective means of technology transfer. The center should offer a wide range of training. Another very successful process has been the van program. A van is outfitted with video equipment, a supply of publications, demonstration equipment, and other tools of learning. Often, a four to six hour class is conducted in an equipment barn or other suitable shelter. A periodic assessment should include real measures of performance, both quality and quantity. Items that should be tracked include courses, suggestions, number of students reached, hours of training, location, student evaluations, and feedback from the clientele. 
there must also be a mechanism to develop new information and training materials. The inclusion of new state-of-the-art material in the services provided is important to the effectiveness and credibility of the center. For more information on this or other IRF videotapes, write to the International Road Federation or call the numbers on your screen.